Hello everyone, this is Lori from Grammy's Keepsakes and I've been asked to do a tutorial on my ephemera box. And if you remember, this ephemera box was in my 1881 journal and it holds all the goodies that are for you to play with in the journal. So let's get started. What I used was a legal size hanging file folder, but you can use a regular file folder if you'd like also, because not everybody would have a legal size because your piece that you need to make the ephemera box out of is seven and a half by 14 and a quarter, which is just shy of legal size. So let's go ahead and make one out of the file folder so that everybody can follow along. And I did make a template to make sure that I can use a file folder because it has a natural fold and I wanted to use it. So my file folder sits like this and here is the inside. This has a double space. I don't want that. And this edge here where it has, that's what I want. Because if I line up that crease with that natural crease, it fits perfect. That's what I want. So to trim this down, fold it in half, <clears throat> excuse me, cut off this side so that it is straight because when you get file folders, they're never straight. So let's cut that off. So now we have a good edge and I need it to be seven and a half. So I'm going to go ahead and trim it seven and a half. My cutter is just off to the left. So now we have a piece ready to go. We want our scoreboard. And we're going to put the, well, let's cut off the 14 and a quarter first so that we don't have all of this in our scoreboard. So we can use your ruler and I'm going to mark 12 and then bring it back over. Now, am I cutting the right? Yes, I am. And then two and a quarter would make it 14 and a quarter. So I want to use this mark here and cut this down. I'm going to erase this one because I've been known to get mixed up. And find my mark in my cutter. So now it's much more manageable. So we want the seven and a half up at the top and grab your bone folder. We're going to score at, bring this down so you can see, 
we have a little bit of glare. Let me see if I can help with that. Okay, we're going to score at half an inch. And yes, it does come off the end of the scoreboard, but just don't score off the scoreboard. And then we're going to score at one inch, one and a half, and then we're going to jump over here to six and score six and a half and seven. And notice I had my fold up here at the top. That's what I want. It makes it easier. Then you only have to score up to that line in actuality because we're going to cut off the rest. But I, I need my two inside ones scored all the way. That's my cutting line. I'm going to rotate it. Okay, our first score is at five and a half. And then we're going to score at five and a quarter. And then we're going to jump all the way over here to 12. And we're going to score at 12 and at 12 and a quarter. That's all the scoring we need to do. Put that away. Now we're going to cut. We're going to cut from here. I'll use a, something darker for you to see. We're going to cut this fold all the way up to that six inch score mark and then we're going to trim all the way same thing on this side we're going to cut all the way to that inch and a half and then that score line and we're going to cut the score lines off. So go ahead and cut. Now the other one. My wiggly marker line. So these, if you have not scored all the way through it, you can use it for your tab. And your circles. And we need two of the one inch
and three of the half inch. And now these can be disposed of. You, you do have these scraps that you could cut your tab and your circles out of if you wanted to. So it doesn't matter. So we're going to put those aside. We're going to use them later. Now what we're going to do is flip it so that the wrong side is up. And we're going to fold this one all the way over. Burnish it with your bone folder. The next score mark, fold it out. And the next one, in. Now on this side, we're going to fold it and then back out again and in. So we've got concertina folds. And then we had this natural fold. We also have that quarter inch score mark. So let's fold that up. And then we have the top two folds. Let's fold those. And that's what it's going to look like. Now I like to take my corner rounder. I use the half inch side. You can use whatever you'd like and get the flap. Now while everything is still open and flat, we need to find the center. And it's four and a half. So that puts my center at two and one quarter. Mark that. And also here, two and a quarter. We need, uh, I marked it in the center for placement. I kind of jumped the gun a little bit. M mark it up here at the top so we can do a thumb hole punch. And you can use any size of round punch you have. Now we're going to fold it over and I'm going to grab my tab that I punched out. Go ahead and fold it in half. Okay, now what I like to do so that I know the placement of the button is I lay this, let me ink that so you can see it. Yeah. 
you can use just a round punch too if you don't have these tab punches. In my Etsy shop, I do have eight ounce variety packs of these punches ready to go. They're a variety of different papers, scrapbooking papers, card stocks, music papers, all kinds of stuff that I had my grandson's punch. Okay, I'm going for the, that center and we're going to place this on that center just like that. This is what I use for my guide. So about a quarter in the center, about a quarter of an inch below that, I'm going to make a dot. That's going to be where my circle is going to be. I find that's a good gauge. And it takes some of the guess out of it. So now what I want to do is glue the two large circles together. Use any glue that you're comfortable with. And then we have those three little circles. We want to glue those together. Lining them up. And glue one more time. And we're going to place this in the center of this button. And that is my spacer so that my cord can wrap around it without folding up the button. So now we need to find the center of this button. And you can find the center however you like. I'm just roughly using a ruler because it's hard for me to get my head over where the center needs to be. I just measured it from a couple different angles. I'm going to grab your crocodile. And if you're going to use a brad, then just go ahead and punch it with your awl. But I'm going to put an eyelet in it. So I'm going to center it in the hole of the large, which is 3 16 And it has no problem punching through all those layers. And if you want to ink this before you install it, ink it now. I'm going to grab some 3 16 eyelets. Choose a color you'd like.
hard decision, right? It shouldn't be. Here, I've got two that match. That works. Because I'm going to need two. So this dot we have here, you want to go ahead and use your long arm crocodile to punch that hole. If you're using a brad, just go ahead and use your awl to punch a hole. So we got that in there and now we're going to set the eyelet. And you want to have your eyelet um, setting on A2. For the 3 sixteenths. If you're using 1 eighth, you want your eyelet setting on C4. And see it has a really nice finish. No sharp edges. Now if you're going to do any inking on here before you install your tab, do that now. You don't have to do the whole thing, just right where we're going to work. And now I want to glue the tab. I didn't get very close to the edges, but I do have a fair amount of glue on there. So now what I want to do is come from the bottom. Here, we're having glare issues again. I apologize for that. Okay, I come from the bottom and I'm eyeballing the center of my tab with that mark. and then bring it up and apply pressure. And if you don't go too close to those edges, then your glue won't seep through. And you can see where I did. Okay, now we're going to install our last eyelet. So I use Use your eye, just judge where you want it to be. I don't know if you can see that. Is that better? So now we'll use our crocodile and haul. Grab the eyelet. And again, my setting is on A2. And there you have a really nice finish. So now we're going to glue it together. I'm going to give this a little bit of ink because it's going to be glued. I won't be able to get at it afterwards. Okay, press those down.
and we're going to glue on that top half inch piece. And on this side, you want them both at the same time. I don't have very much glue left in my little bottle. Okay, put that aside. Kind of hold them down and grab your cover and bring it over you want to make sure that you're at the edge before you pinch it And the art glitter glue dries really fast. So line it up and pinch it. Put the pin back in. Use your ruler and get in there. So now we just need a string. And then we are set. And you probably need about 14 inches or so. About yay much. Needs to be doubled. Fold it in half. Come up through the hole we're making a lark's head and then you can string some beads on the buttons and then just can run this through the ink before you use any color of string you have. This is just was handy. And then it just wraps around and tie a little knot in it. And you have an ephemera box. Make sure all your folds are nice and creased and your box itself measures four and a half by six and a quarter so a lot of four by six ephemera will fit nicely in here so have fun thank you for watching and have a creative day.